All right. So today I'm joined by Yancey Medeiros. He's a member of the Nick Diaz Army, and uh, he was just a part of the crazy fight week that was with Nate Diaz at UFC 279. So I just wanted to chat with him and get his thoughts on the crazy week and just kind of catch up with him and see how everything's doing after that hectic week. How are you doing, Yancey? Can't complain, bro. I was there when I woke up on an island. <laughs> <laughs> I, ain't got no, I ain't got no reason to complain about anything, bro. But, yeah, I guess... It was a crazy week for everyone else, bro. For the team, for the army, bro. It was just another mission, but it went smooth. Like everything went well. Like besides what was playing out in the media, bro. Like our squad, we did what we were supposed to do, bro. Mission accomplished. There was no craziness between us. It was it was everyone else, bro. Like all of us were ninjas in that shit. It was it was it was a it was a great week for us, and it went like this, bro. Mm-hmm. Until the end. So yeah, it, it started off. It started off, you know, how it was supposed to, and it ended off even better than what it was supposed to be. Nate, oh, yeah, knows, how to, Nate knows how to move his stars, bro. Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, I was also yeah. going to say, too, like, you guys are so experienced with everything. You've been through so many, like, battles with Nate at this point, and you're all experienced fighters yourselves. So um, I was thinking that was going to be a big advantage on your guys' end going into it. But real quick, um, you kind of froze up on my screen here. I just got you, like, a picture of you stuck. Um, I don't know what we can do about it. I don't know if you want to try to join back in or something, or what do you think? I see you moving. I see you moving right now. Like I'm, I'm moving too. So, all right, we're good. Looking yeah. even better now for some reason. Okay, so you were just saying like it was a crazy week, and uh, you guys moved through it like straight ninjas, which is exactly what the Nick Diaz Army is about, right? Um, but I, I just said too, I wanted to get your thoughts on it. How I mentioned that. You know, you guys are a lot more experienced in these battles. You've been through it with McGregor a couple times. Um, yeah. Just the, you know, you you guys are all experienced fighters as well. And I think you guys are more like a little bit more um, similar people all together. I think you guys all have a little bit of rougher backgrounds and you guys kind of move that mm-hmm. way. So uh, yeah, yeah. how was it just sure. like, you know, moving through fight week, I guess. And did you feel like you had a little bit of a mental advantage as far as like the teams went and even like Nate went as far as like compared to Comzot? Well, I mean, we weren't even – when it comes to being a team, bro, I don't even think we were there trying to prove anything about us being an army. Like, you know, it's never that. It's just, bro, our, our boy's about to fight. We need to be there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that, that's, that's the most intention, and it's to protect that. It's not to go out and be like, oh, we're here for our team. Fuck you all, guys. Like, we're just rolling with our squad. You know what I mean? We ain't looking for trouble. Mm-hmm. We ain't – but you know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't going to start it, but we definitely finish it if it crosses our path. But we're yeah. not – like, everything that happened in the weigh-ins and all that, that was trouble coming t- towards the group. That wasn't us trying to antagonize anything. You know what I'm saying? It was mm-hmm. just – we were trying to get our space. Hey, y'all know that we don't like to fuck around. Keep your shit over there. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. pretty much it, bro. We respect – that's we, – we don't we don't go and invade boundaries. But at the same time, like, y'all know where we at. Don't come over here. No, he's yeah. gonna deal with that. Yeah, you know I'm saying it's like it's just about boundaries and res- respecting that. And if you ain't gonna respect that, you can get checked. <laughs> that that's it, bro. If you don't no harm, no foul, you stay on your side, we stay on our side, we cool. Like so when it came to the team thing, like we ain't trying to prove anything or just roll up. We just they, we just being there for our boy and we got a, we got an objective to to um to complete. Okay, I got you. So it's not really about trying to like even start anything because you're here, like you just said, Never. to complete the mission, right? So you're yeah, there for support. I didn't fly, bro. I didn't fly out to Hawaii to be beefing somebody else on their team. I flew out to be there for Nate and protect that shit. Yeah. Whatever's around that, I'm going to keep that. That was, that was my job. Okay. You know what I mean, everybody's on that same thing. Like we ain't over here being like, oh, we squat up. Now we're going to make trouble. Like, what? Yeah. No, we're here for Nate. Every day, bro, we go, we go train, we go out, we go have our fun. Nate, Nate, Nate's getting um chilling, you know, resting up for the next day. Boom, wake up, collaborate, train, go out again. Like, you, but we squat up every time. Like, we know what the, we know what mission we're there for. Yeah, Vegas, bro, we pulling, we pulling everybody else that's not on the like, not, like Nate's not fighting. Um, Nate's fighting, so he's sleeping or resting up. We're out, bro. We're having our fun. We're doing our thing, bro. We're still waking up in the morning. Still don't go for train. Like we're there because we're there for Nate. We're not just that. Everything else is the cherry on top. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, but other than that, like we're we, we're just there for him, bro. And we don't we ain't there we ain't there to cause trouble, but we're there to protect that and complete an objective. 
Mm -hmm. I think it's good that you say that because I think sometimes um, the assumption is that you guys are kind of just like there to cause trouble and stuff and not exactly. really like, like yeah. bro, I've never had a street fight in my life. <laughs> I'm be fucking hanging around with punks. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just hang around with people that ain't going to get punk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, there's a difference, bro. Yeah. You know they're saying in that sense. And a lot of people are going to misjudge and be prejudiced to whatever they see. Yeah. Think whatever you like, think like, I know, how, I know what operates and I know how we operate in this, in this, um, in this squad. Yeah. And it's, all, right. and it's all brothers, bro. We're all brothers of the sword. And we're there. We were there to protect me. We wasn't there to cause trouble, <laughs> make fights or you know, anything like that. We were there to be, just like I said, we were there to protect our, to protect our boy. Just yeah. Like if I was going to, they came over there, support and protect me. Hell yeah. That's awesome. And I guess before yeah. we get more into that, I do want to like let fans know a little bit of your backstory. Like, um, where are you from originally? I think you're from Makaha, Hawaii, right? Or where are you from? Yeah, West side, West side Makaha, Hawaii, Waianae, Hawaii. So I'm um, seeing same, same city, like same city, just a different county, but West side of Oahu, pretty much. Um, started with Nick and Nate back in 2011, I believe. Yeah. The rest is history, and then part of the squad now, bro. <laughs> right, right. And I guess like, okay, so. For those who don't know, is it um, a nice area that you grew up in, or is it a little bit like older, a little rougher? Mean, it's, How it's, is it? We're, we're in Hawaii, so everywhere is nice. But yeah, yeah it's a more more area. You know, it's not where it's not where all the rich people live. Right. And I was, you know, it's like put it this way: I was raised in an area where going to my grandma's was going to the beach and go visit them, and all my cousin them was out there, and my cousin my grandma was homeless. We uh -huh. had those. We, we was raised in that type of surroundings and environment. Yeah, and we, we knew how to we knew how to operate out of love with that and not fear, and that's why I am the way I am today because I've lived in that. I've loved and indulged in the, I guess the unfortunate events of bad choices people make. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like I've, I've had those things. So yeah, Macau has a, definitely a lot of lessons, but a lot of love there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's why I think you had a post recently. You said something like um in short like you're just so grateful these days right you can't even be bitter yeah. about things nah man i mean look what the world is going through and went through bro like there's just so much so much shit going on right now and it's like i i just gotta keep me happy i can't control anything out there yeah yeah you know, i feel that you know, all these experiences living going away look my boy's fighting bang go out to vegas yeah protect that shit do a mission come back come back uh, home. and uh, so i just wanted to ask too like because you didn't get in any fights, but I know why is a little bit of a, it's kind of like a fighting town, you might say, right? Um, yeah. How did you not get into fights, really? And then I'm curious how you got into fighting, you know, like that. Um, I think physical altercation is like, should be a last defense of trying to figure something out. Mm -hmm. You know, so I basically, like, I was raised in a, I was raised in a town where it was like, if if you felt if they felt stupid or you felt like if you felt like you insulted their intelligence they would want to beat you up you know what I mean? Be like yeah like oh you're stupid so i leave you like i ended up growing up i was like yeah that doesn't roll with me like in my head you know yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah like i like use my i like use my mind i like use you know those things and ironically i'm a professional fighter yeah you know? like but yeah, i was raised in a town where like you know fighting and being physical was was natural and that was like an instinctual thing for the, for the men around us so if you could fight you was looked highly upon you know and like yeah. for me it was like like competing but i never like beating i never like belittling people i guess yeah no and that I makes sense that, like, yeah so it's like i'm a competitor bro i'm like fucking it man you yeah know, come my house let's see who give you the best bro Walk outside we cool bro you have a beautiful day i'm yeah, like yeah. that bro like 100 but i understand that martial arts is that's that's why it's so beautiful because it's an art and there's many ways to draw a canvas and there's many different personalities that draw on that canvas. So I respect it all and I accept it all. You know, some, some martial artists go in with a mind, mad mindset, some go in with a happy mindset, whatever it is, bro, it's your craft, it's your canvas. I can't, I can't jock that. I can only appreciate it and take notes. No, that makes sense. Right? So yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna judge that. You know, I'm no judge, man. God, oof, I ain't perfect. Who the fuck am I to judge anybody? Yeah, because I think some people, you know, they do get into it from the other way, like as far as like street fights and stuff, and they're like, "Wow, I'm good at this, so I should get, turn this yeah. like professional." I think like 
both stories happen. So you're not here to judge anything, but you were more about yeah. um, competing. That's where it came from. Is that from wrestling? Did you wrestle in high school or something? Um, yeah, I wrestled. I wrestled in high school, but it's from martial arts. That's it. You know, karate. Um, you know, I started with Universal Kempo Karate. It's more like a Kaji Kempo system, and it's um, I think it most mostly it just taught me how not to fight. I see. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it was a discipline where like I knew kind of like what I was capable of, but it taught me like the best defense, bro, in life prevention. Yeah. <laughs> And I think and maybe it I'm taught you to a... not, like, defend. You don't have to, like, see where you stand because maybe you saw, like, where you stand well, in, like, raised, karate like and said, stuff. I was raised in a physical environment where people were like, bro, if I, if, if I can beat everybody up, then, bro, I'm the man. And I learned from five, that I, that's my longest relationship, martial arts. So mm -hmm. I've been doing it since I was years old. That's my longest okay. commitment. Gotcha. And, yeah, so from from that time on, I was always had that, bro. I was watching all that Bruce Lee Chuck Norris, Steven Seagal, Jean-Claude Van Damme, all of that, bro. Power Rangers, anything that freaking got, you know what I mean? They're doing katas, bro. I was in that. I, I used to like the Power Rangers, it. too. <laughs> all of that, bro. All yeah. of it, right? Because yeah. I resonated with it all. Like I was like, oh, I'm going to be that one day, bro. Street Fighter, video games. I'm going to be in a video game one day. <laughs> Just, you know, all so is that how it all like, happened for you? Like, you were always going to be a fighter? Because I'm curious. Like, nah, you were always no, planning no, on being never, a fighter, kind of? Nah, not even. I just okay. always love martial arts. Yeah, you know okay. I mean? you're always like that's what got me into wrestling because I was just like, oh, I see this. Excuse me, one moment, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just call my dog. She's over there. Barking over there. Yeah. All good. All good. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Um. She. What was the question again, bro? Excuse me. Um. I was asking. Oh, how you um. I think I was asking how you got into fighting exactly. Oh, like yeah, yeah. Like I mean, I was so I was always into competing. Mm -hmm. I never did any sports. I never did any other. I never did any of the like football, basketball. Like when I was a kid, but when I came to high school, I just, I just started wrestling. I did karate my whole life, but I started wrestling because I got introduced to jujitsu from karate. My grandmaster was just showing us all these things, and I was like, ah, oh, <laughs> I'm going into this, right? You know, yeah, I mean, wrestling led me to. Wrestling led me to just being more competitive and being active, being more of a martial artist. And then after high school, I just was working construction and started like getting hella fat. And I was like, oh, I like do something. Yeah. So I started coaching the wrestling team, my, oh, my wrestling team. And yeah, high school. I was just an assistant coach though. Yeah. And then I started losing weight and then I just ended up rolling with a guy. This guy called Vika Palu. He asked me if I like training in his house because I was just lifting weights after wrestling practice. Just because I was a fat, I was a broad tie to be fat. Yeah. yeah, maybe I gotta do something. I'm better than this. Uh -huh. And then, yeah, bro, from a garage, a couple, couple Ami fights, and God, the rest is now. <laughs> I never planned on being it. I remember in high school watching DJ Penn, Yves Edwards, being like, oh, I could do that. But yeah. I wasn't telling nobody, like, oh, I'm gonna be a fighter. I'm gonna fight in you. <laughs> okay. Like, I was not, nobody, bro, everybody was like, what? Yancy? Fight? Like, you know, they wasn't expecting, none of my people in, on the West Side expected that. Dang, even yeah, though you wrestled like, and stuff? That, that wasn't, yeah, even though I wrestled, but that wasn't my cadence. Like, I, I wasn't the, you know what yeah. I mean? I wasn't a West Side banger. Like, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, I wasn't, <laughs> that's what we known for. So, you uh -huh. know, most of the guys, they had, like, a good growing up, like, all the uncles and all the young kids, we had a good boxing program. Like, why not boxing is really known for their stuff, especially in Hawaii, right? I mean, uh -huh. it's all the kids follow it. I never boxed Asa in Stevens. High Asa Stevens, he's a yeah. fan right now. He's yeah. playing it right now. There's a bunch, there's a bunch right now, and I'm just horrible at names. But yeah, all <laughs> Wine Eye boys, uh -huh. they're on their um, Nito boxing right now. Nito's helping them, you know, excel and get 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 out there and represent. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy for them all. But Wine Eye, bo Wine Eye boxing was definitely one of the biggest biggest things that came out of Wine Eye when it came to competing and whatnot. So and I yeah, didn't true. do any of that in high school, so nobody yeah. was like, "Oh yeah, he gonna fight." Right, you know, right. I wasn't doing anything as on on amateur. In fact, like. Max them got into fighting way before I did. Like Max was already doing kickboxing and all those things. Like he was kickboxing four times a week. A That's month. right. You know what I mean? Just doing yeah, that. Yeah. He was just yeah. Then I ended up getting into it into the MMA scene. But I Max see. them was already competing and in, all into those stuff like way before me. I see. And so from yeah. the garage, when did you? Uh, how long was that till you started training with like the Diaz brothers and stuff? Two, two maybe about two years. 
two years. Two years. Yeah, like my first my first fight out of Hawaii. Oh, that's the one Nick and Nate, Nick and Nate and Caesar Gracie watched. I see. And, yeah, and then from there, um, you know, Nick was like, "Hey, bro, this guy, bring this guy." So and then, yeah, I got invited, trained with them, earned my stripes. Like, bro, that's the thing. Like, these guys, everybody's invited there. Yeah. You got to earn your stripes, bro. You got to put in your work. You got to sweat. You got to bleed, bro. And mm-hmm. you got to show that you're ready to be a soldier. One thing, one thing that I can always take and appreciate from, from Nick and Nate, not just as, not just as um, UFC athletes, but as martial artists, bro, is they always made me, um, all the seeds my grand my grandmaster planted in me when I was a fucking kid, mm-hmm. bro. Like Nick and Nick watered that shit, and I was like, "What?" Like my there's only a, a, a few people that you know just did certain things in my life, and it just I was like, "Bro, I always had this in me." For instance, I'll go to yoga, and my yoga teacher's like, "Wow, yeah, it's like you can you get the breath work great." And in my head, I'm like, "Bro, I remember doing this at like five because my uncle would go to the fucking Himalayas and with all these Buddhist monks, and then he'd come home and teaches all this shit." And I'm just like, "Yeah, <laughs> it's bored out of my mind, right?" So he <laughs> fucking planted a seed in me, and yeah. I'm like, "Dang, my uncle was making me a ninja before I even knew I wanted to be one." Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it, it all it all replicated. And then one time I finished this fight, and Nick Nick was like, "Yeah, how many fights? I mean, how long have you been doing karate?" And I was like shit since i was like five and he's like bro nobody can take that shit away from you and this is right after my fight and nick said me this and i'm like nobody can take that that commitment nobody can take away from you you are where you are because of that and it fucking hit me i was like a martial artist bro i've been doing this journey since i was five and everything i've learned up until that day nobody can do there's people that just got into mma like, you know, he's letting me know, like, bro, you've been fucking doing this since you was five years old, bro. Wow. Nobody can take that away from you. Remember that shit. He's telling me that without telling me that. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, that's wow, pretty powerful. Just, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And, like, like that shit just fucking web, web, bro, it just made my shit just fucking, whoa, it lightened <laughs> me, right? And I was like, oh, shit, I'm more than a fighter. I'm more than an entertainer. Yeah. I'm a fucking martial artist, bro. And I've been doing that shit since I was five. And Fuck that was yeah. like a turning point for you, you'd say, where you kind of well, like embraced yourself. That was just an yourself. empowering moment for me yeah. to respect myself as a martial artist, and I can see where he, I can see where he's at. Mm-hmm. Like I know why I'm, I resonate to you. I know why you're real. I know why I consider you the gold because you're yeah. a true martial artist, regardless right. with all these outside, you know, influences and distracting. Like he's a true martial artist, bro. Like just people, people, people do their shit. You can't take away from that. Let's be accountable here. Yeah, and that's why us Nick Diaz, Nick Diaz Army, we all praise Nick for that because he is. Y'all don't know because y'all don't know, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, like whoever yeah. don't know, like, I know, I know. Like you're know saying that I give you a great, I'll give you a great story, bro. Like Nick, okay. you see all these stuff where Nick them are in Starbucks and they're training, right? Mm-hmm. Bro, that shit never stops. That, that, ain't, that ain't a front, bro. That's fucking real since the day I met Nick, bro. We'd uh-huh. be like, we'd be. When I met Nick first time, there's all kinds of guys that come cross train and do shit. And like we being like fucking Whole Foods, bro. Nick would just start shadow boxing, bro. Like, <laughs> and bro, nobody's like in front of him. He's just zoned out, right? Like we just walking through aisles, looking at stuff to eat, and Nick's just <clears throat> and what just never dudes, turns bro? off. Well, and then he's like, What are you doing? All right, Nick, what are you doing? He's like, I just do 35 left hooks. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, boy, in my head, I'm like, whoa. Like, you know, you never stop. Just always, always getting ahead. Training. We're always training, bro. Like, it's never not there. Don't uh-huh. ever think you can. Like, you don't need four walls. You don't need a dojo. You don't need you don't need certain people to, to have a training mind, a martial artist mindset. You just never stop. Yeah, like, no, Elon that's true. Musk going to, Elon Musk trying to get outside this world and go to other planets, bro. His fucking mind never stops. Nick is the same way. Nate is the same way, bro in their aspect even like um i remember when there's like a viral clip from back in the day where he was uh doing like an interview for um like an organization outside the ufc and he's like taking a bong rip doing nunchucks he can't stop even when they're doing phone interviews and stuff constantly working yeah bro he's like no i'm gonna flow with the goal 
Yeah. You know, I'm going to I'm going to keep my state. I'm going to keep my my rhythm. I ain't going to be static. Yeah, that's why he's one of my favorite fighters of all time. I used to watch all those countdowns and stuff when his career was over. Not over necessarily, but um, I guess when he was out of the UFC for those four years, I used to go back yep. and watch all those countdowns and see him training and stuff. And that even inspired yep. me a lot just to go on runs and like even yeah, try bro. biking and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. There's one thing, one thing I got from cross training and coming from Hawaii and going to Stockton and then just going all over it nick and neat i always ask everybody this question well, what is what is most important bro the journey or the destination i would say i guess the journey the company uh the company that's when you're in the one. trenches bro and life is shit and you with good company bro everything is g mm -hmm. you with shitty company bro and you're in the trenches life is horrible but bro like for instance Thursday night, we're running, bro, like 10 o'clock at night before the weigh-ins. We're running in a fucking sandstorm, bro. There's a legit sandstorm going on in Vegas above us, and we're running that making weight. Dang. That's fucking hell. That but is. we're all like, oh, this is fucking crazy, bro, right? It's the company, bro. Because you're all together. All yeah, yeah, bro, yeah. and that's what people don't ever realize because they don't they don't get that. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, when I'm home, my company is everything. When I travel, my company is everything because I'm ready for it all. And yeah. Nick and Nate, Nick and Nate, help me see that. Like, help me live that. You know what I'm saying, bro? Don't you think in my fight I'm gonna be running in a fucking sandstorm? Nah, I'm gonna make, make I'm gonna make better better situations for myself. But I know I can. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm no, bro, yeah. I know I can go. I know I'm ready for hell. And I know I can get there. I just need the right company. Yeah. You know what I mean? I put myself in these situations and be accountable, bro. I like always find the right company from in your house to whoever you whoever you whoever you're around, bro. You gotta so, you gotta find the right company and your life is always gonna be like Yantis. Yeah, yeah. So here, before we get you know? into like the fight week and stuff, because I want I got a few uh, questions about that too. But yeah. I'm curious, like give someone some advice then, like how do you go about finding some good company? Because I think it's hard, right? There's some kind of people out there who are trying to get something out of you or maybe shady sometimes. Oh, so yeah, how yeah, do you yeah. like filter through or maybe find like solid company, I guess? Well, I mean, we we operate two ways in life, bro. We operate out of fear and out of love. You know what I mean? And if you feel like for me, I operate out of love, so I'm very open. And they're going to reveal themselves to me. Like my boundaries is very open. Some people mm -hmm. is like, Nah, you gotta earn that. Yeah. Like for me to earn for me to earn Nikki's respect, I had to earn that over the years. Yeah, I hear bro, like you know what I mean? Because how much people you think they've met right is there to ride up to ride a cloud to to do you know what I mean? That's exactly. it. Bro, bro, I'm there for them. Mm -hmm. I don't care what. Like if Nate was like, Bro, you gotta stay here and hold the house down while I go fight. Bet. That's what you needed me for do. It's gonna suck, but hey. I'll do that. I hear for yeah. you, bro. This is for your well-being. Like that's 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 just the role I'll, I'll take and play. But show people how you want to be treated. Okay. That's why I never been into a fight. That's why I'm with the people I'm around because I show people how I want to be treated, bro. Simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> bro, like the the biggest I got was, bro. I want to fight. Cross this line, bro. I'm gonna protect myself, bro. I like go home. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, the yeah. most physical outside altercation i got i just show people how i want to be treated whether you think i scared or not that's on you bro <laughs> i got you, know you. I, mean? I got so you're a little bit more open and welcoming me. yeah yeah I mean, and then, but some people are different you know yeah. what i'm saying like my mom she operated out of fear she's like no no girlfriend none of this none of that, none of that, none of that. you know what i mean not mm -hmm. i cannot do this cannot do that <laughs> and like, i was like ah you know like I realized now and I learned from one of my mentors, bro, rules and laws are made because a solution can't be found to that to that rule or that law. Mm -hmm. So whenever I can find a solution or keep peace, like it's easier for me because all the outside world, like, yeah, there's all these rules and laws and all that and y'all can't find a solution for that. So I ain't gonna even be crazy about it. I just gonna make sure I show people how to treat me. Yeah. Like, like, and for instance, me and my mom or me and my baby's mom, we ain't together. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna. We never need the justice system to figure out how we're gonna go and figure out our daughter. Uh -huh. Like let, let, let us do that. Why are we gonna pay somebody else to 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 
see if who can manage how we will manage being parents. I want to pay nobody else for that. I'm a grown ass adult. What? Yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> hey, I'm so with you terms. on that. I get it, but let's come to terms here. We love our kid, right? Like, let's figure right. this out. Like, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna rely on nobody. I show people, I show my baby mama how I want to be treated, and she respects that. Yeah, you know I'm saying like, no, yeah. things, like that's how I get my company, bro, and that's why I'm with Nate and Nick and Nate them, and that's why I have the people around me that um that are around me bro you're gonna disrespect me i'm gonna show you up with you i'm gonna show you what happens when you disrespect me yeah but i'll keep that between but i keep that between that person and i i think that's why i don't have any problem you know, man we have a respect back there you might dislike me but you will respect my boundaries mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. Hate me, but you will respect my boundaries bro and then like for me everyone knows i'm a passionate open love you know open-hearted guy so it's it's easy for me to to um to open up and love and operate that way i got but, you. you know trust to trust people and to respect them and you know have them in my like i'm a i'd be acquainted bro, i'm i'm acquainted there here we go mm-hmm. know the difference between friends and acquaintances okay yeah i think that's good and because my friends is my family my acquaintances is my acquaintances and i still my passion my my love my law is all the same but my boundaries is different Mm-hmm. for them right and if they know that or not it's all good they just know how to treat me right you know what i mean saying like everyone they like some maybe some and that's just because of how i operate and that's cool but then i have my i have my my friends bro, my family that is that i operate way differently with mm-hmm. you know what i mean there's a difference like you're gonna treat you have siblings uh i do yeah yeah you're gonna treat your brothers or your siblings way different than you treat an acquaintance yeah. Right. Yeah. You have that feel, True. right? That's the same thing with me. Like my friends and my family, though. I'm fucking. I right, we're in Hawaii, bro. I'm in a melting pot. Yeah. And I understand. Like blood, blood is relatives, bro. Loyalty is family. That's that's and a I good one. That from martial arts. Yeah, bro. It is right. You can have hell of blood relatives. I have hell of blood relatives, bro. Mm-hmm. But some of them do ice. Some of them have bad habits. Some of them yeah. steal. Still love them. I just have to boundary myself. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean, right? I can still love them. I don't need to hate them for probably human. Do we, yeah, I understand, but you're on, you're on your shit. I love you, but you can't be sleeping over my house when I'm not here. You're, you might still shit. <laughs> right? And yeah, so you just got to keep your boundaries. Bro, always. You, you show people how you want to be treated. Mm-hmm. You need oh, you need a short cause. Hey, I, I give them to you, bro. Can you? No, I'm not going to give you $500, bro. You already know you didn't burn me. <laughs> so, you know, we I all got that one person. Yeah. yeah, and just because you feel bad, bro, doesn't mean it's wrong. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm an I feel empathic you. person, bro. I'm a very, very empathic person, but I've learned not to absorb. I yeah. observe. Right? You have to, bro. We have to learn, like, traveling the world and Nick and Nate and all these things, like, help me fucking just collect more data and just be, learn how to operate the way I operate. Because some people, operate, like I said, they're going to operate out of fear and love, and I choose to operate out of, of, out of love. Okay. Show people how to treat. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I think that's probably why you have a great circle around you, you know, man, because yes. you have like you're yes. more open and you're willing to kind of put yourself out there and and see what let people show you their true colors. But uh so let me ask you a few questions about the fight week. Um how much what's it called? Are you guys all staying in the same house basically? Pretty much like me me um Nate uh got a big Airbnb for a bunch of the boys to stay and we all collaborate. If they're if they're late or whatever, then they'll try and, like, you know, the boys will just have hotels. But Nate tries to accompany everybody, bro, and keep the squad. squad okay. one. As the week gets on, though, bro, everybody starts piling in. Or more people start coming. But you know how it goes. Uh-huh. Just, how much, just, uh, uh, squad up, bro. Squad up. <laughs> how much weed's getting smoked all day long in there? Or, like, Ooh, what's it like? <laughs> Give me an idea. <laughs> That's nonstop, bro. That's all day. Blunt <laughs> you know, joint all day, bro. <laughs> I would say, uh, I've been perfectly over there too because I'm an all day type of guy, honestly. Yeah. So I was over here just trying, I wasn't trying to be rude or anything. No, nah, like, you're good. My, my medicine up and stuff. Yeah, dude, here. go ahead. Do it, do what you want over there. But, but it's all, yeah, it's all, it's, um, thank you. Yeah, it's all. That's guaranteed, bro. Oh, yeah, man. But um, one thing is we try and we don't go with the flow, bro. We flow with the goal. That's right. I always remember that when you see Nate and you see us like that, like we don't try and we don't go with the flow, bro. You go with the flow, then you are like, you're like everybody else. You're adaptable. That's why, that's why well, that's why the that's why the group stands out because we're not going with the flow. Who the fuck goes to a Motley Crew concert, the after waves? Which was sick as hell, by the way. Right, because when you look at it, they're like, oh, why are you doing that, bro? If you're 
for some people, being stuck in four walls and looking at a fight is anxiety. Uh huh. And for others, like Nate is like, no, nah, I'm with my boys. I'm with my soldier, with my soldiers, and we're going. Uh-huh. I'm going to war tomorrow, but we feasting. Yeah, you know, we having fun. It's like fucking three hundred. <laughs> Tonight we feast, boys, but tomorrow we dying in hell. Like you, you know, gotta no, live it up fun. while you can. Right, like it's yeah. no, nothing. No different time, same shit though, same right. mindset. You know what I mean? Like, why do you need to be in an enclosed space? I'm not saying I got to operate like that, but he can. Look at that, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, you don't go with the flow. You flow with the goal. And I, I, like I, always appreci- I always appreciate that from Nick and Nate. They always show me that from the time, from the first time I flew out with them to this Las Vegas trip, bro. And that's why they're brothers to me. And that's probably why, um, you know, Nate's been able to make such a long career and really capitalize on everything because he's been... Uh, Flowing with the go, as you say, right? Yes, sir, bro. Exactly. Yep. Shit would have uh, happened the way it didn't happen unless, but bro, Nate was like, y'all see that circus? I've been dealing with that all my, my whole career. Uh-huh. Y'all getting crazy. This is, this is, this is just us, bro. Another day another, for him. Another job, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Shit and uh, changed, bro. so uh, just back to the circus real quick, even too. Um, I heard that there was something, a little deal with like, I guess a misunderstanding with uh, Tiki Gozen who's uh, like affiliate with you guys, of course. What did that, was that able to get worked out or anything or what happened there? Um, from, from from what I know and what I can expose, I don't know anything about it. I just okay. know that he wasn't supposed to be in that area, bro. Wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. That, that, that's, that, that's all I know. And my boy is going to show you how to, how, how to treat them. Yeah. And I don't know if they did that is because he deserved it, bro. Like it's not, and he broke some type of etiquette. Okay. But I never, I never, I don't dig into it. Okay. You, know you just kind of left it alone. Like, put it this way. Like, I'm the guy, like, when something happens to me, I don't ask him what went wrong. I'm not like, you okay, bro? You good? Mm-hmm. I don't talk about the fight, nothing like that. I'm like, I'm your brother, bro. Everybody you got else, his back. the whole world is asking about that. I care about your well being, your, your, you. I don't need, I don't need to even know about that because people going to tell me about them anyway. That's right? a real so, friend right there, too. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Hey, what? Like, Nate, you, you good? We good out. Okay, I got your back, bro. I'm here for protect. Yeah. For protect this. Yeah. Like, that's, that's right. That's what we have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's like I'm saying, bro, and that thing was like, we was minding our own business. That shit came to our shit over to us. We like, yeah. oh, keep that way. Keep that way. You guys are just <laughs> there. Bro. Hey, you know, like setting your boundaries like you normally do. But here, yes, yes, a few more yeah. for you, like uh, maybe rapid fire. We got five minutes. So let's go for yeah. a little rapid fire. Um, yeah. What do you think is. um? Well, first off, how happy were you for, to see Nate go out on top like that, man? How, like, did it, oh, you know, how happy were you to see that? Before? Everything was meant to be how it's supposed to be, but you deserve that. Mm-hmm. I was like, Nate, you deserve everything that happened to you. Because the fight was badass, the press conferences you did was better. Yeah. I was like, bro, you freaking just know how to cap it off even better and better than, like, you started out, you finished the fight at 209. You know, everything just was meant to be how it was supposed to be. It was meant to be. Anybody that hated on Nate, bruh. Told you so. Hey, it's all that energy, <laughs> you know right? I mean? Sometimes like, all that hate energy, you know, it just works the opposite way. I think a lot of people bro, were betting on him to, you know, r- not hey, do so well. And yeah. Another thing I learned from Nick and Nate, bro, if it can hold your attention, get you emotional, and mm-hmm. engage with you, you're a fan. Yeah. You might, and whether it's good or bad, bro, if it holds you, if it gets you emotional, you engage and it holds your attention. You're a fan, bro. Yeah. It's like Tom Brady. People love him and hate him. They're still fans because they're still talking about him, bro. Mm-hmm. I think they have the <laughs> awareness to, like, harness all that and take it for what yeah, it is bro. versus, like, get consumed because, with, like, shitty Nate, negativity. Because Nate's, because Nate's a, a martial artist. He's not an yeah. athlete. That's He's right. a martial artist that has athleticism and competes with athletes, and you can be categorized as one, but he's like, I'm a martial artist, bro. I'm he's a fighter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, this is my journey. This isn't just... You know, like I've been doing this. Y'all just new in this game. Yeah, I'm still here, and y'all still new. And he's right, right? All these inter- all these interviews, he's like, bro, all these guys don't come in here two, three years, and they out. It happens, you know what I'm saying? And like, he's uh-huh. been in there since, you know what I mean, to his last his last fight. You know, I think that's a big part of like his success too. Is just how long he's been able to stay there and be real. And like you're saying, it's just 24 seven, you know, for them. And I think it's something that gets don't, underestimated don't get lost a lot. In the sauce. Yep. Lost in the sauce. Yep. I got the company. The yeah. I got one more question for you. Um, what do you think is next for Nate? Uh, because you know oh, you're you're close man. with him. You you have any inclinations? I, I, I um honestly like I 
I never did ask him. Uh-huh. I would hope he gets into some just building his brand, which I would think would be boxing. But who knows? You know, like, I'm gonna I'm ride with him. Yeah. Whatever Nate does, like he said, it's gonna be it's gonna be legit, bro. He's gonna he's gonna fucking make he's gonna make the best of it. Yeah. He knows. He know. I mean, look what happened. He made he called his shots. He made his moves, and he got even better. And like, I hope I just. He's just building a brand that helps us. Like, bro, Nate flew me out and I made money doing representing him, protecting him, being that. And I got to I got to do signings. I got to do all these other things just from being a part of the clip. So he's trying to yeah. not just uprise his brand. He's trying to make everybody grow in the video, okay. in that video promotion. Yeah, bro. So it's it's That's bigger sick. than him. That's yeah, sick. Bro. It's not about like, what's bro, next for like him. Said, like, he's like he, working bro, for they, you. They flew me out. They yeah. flew me out and I made money. That's, you know what they say? Like, like, flew me out. Um, what is that called? Um, housed me. Like it wasn't. You know what I'm saying? And that's all just to be a bro. Yeah. Just to be like you, my bro. And when when pandemic hit, game up, game up. Then Nate, Nate shit. They was the ones still trying to give me money, bro. Like you're not wow. much, but he's giving me something, bro. Mm-hmm. Like Nate's a G, and like he don't even need to talk about all of those things. And like, he don't want people talking about it. Yeah. You know, fuck that. That's my boy, bro. And people don't even know how much this guy gives. Right. They don't no, and know, I have a feeling bro, he I'm is a, like I'm that. I'm a lover. I represent that shit for you. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a feeling yeah. he is like that, honestly. You can just kind of tell. But um, bro, how are you going to have 100 people like that? You either, you either taking advantage of them, taking advantage of them, or you helping all of them. Yep. If you if you want the best guys in the room, bro, you're going to do two things. You're going to take, take advantage of everybody, or you're going to help everybody. That's and right. I'm a fucking alpha, bro. Nobody fucking taking advantage of me, bro. I don't that's roll. Right. I don't roll around people like that. I don't right, respect right. people like that. So that's yeah, they small boy, bro. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> well, thank you for the time, Yancy. See, great catching oh, up with yeah. you and getting your thoughts about the crazy fight week. And I'd like to talk about your yeah. career uh, next time we can chat. Yeah, we'll link up, bro.